Signaling is perhaps the single most important factor in ensuring the safe and efficient running of any railway. Despite its utmost importance, most railways operate vastly different signalling systems owing to the insulated nature in which they have developed. This is especially true in Australia, where each state operates a different system. In this video I will explain, in detail, all the aspects of New South Wales railway signalling and some of the necessary background information as well. The basic principle of signalling is to ensure trains cannot occupy the same section of track, or block, at the same time. In most systems, including in New South Wales, this is done by electrically dividing lines into individually controllable blocks, each protected by a signal. The information displayed by the signals follows the British philosophy of route signalling, where drivers commit information about line speeds to memory and are told of which line they will be routed over. This contrasts with the American philosophy of speed signalling, where drivers are told of what speed is appropriate for the route ahead, but are not told what the route is specifically. Back in the days of mechanical semaphores, New South Wales used a system almost identical to that used in the UK. However, in the century since, colour light signalling has been introduced, and the two systems have diverged slightly, but the basic elements are still the same. In New South Wales, there are two subtypes of signalling, called regimes. Most of Sydney and some other areas fall under the double light regime, with two distinct heads, each displaying at least one colour, although additional colours may also be displayed, which I'll get to later. Most other lines that have been signalled are in the single light regime. Shunt signals and points indicators are commonplace across both regimes and provide nuanced information relevant to a small area. There exist a very small number of semaphore signals, however they are so rare that I will not cover them in this video. Most of the remaining semaphores are due to be replaced as part of the Lithgow re-signalling project too. I will also not cover more nuanced topics like approach locking, operation of crossovers or overlaps. The double light regime is used in busy parts of the railway and provides additional aspects or combinations of colours which convey more information to drivers and allow slightly better utilisation of the line. The upper head can be read as an indicator of the line immediately ahead of the train, red meaning the line is occupied, yellow meaning a diverging route is set, i.e. the train will leave the main line, and green meaning the line ahead is clear. The lower head provides more information about further blocks ahead of the signal. When a top red is displayed, a bottom red is also displayed. A double red displayed alone is a stop aspect. Sometimes additional information is conveyed by extra lights mounted below the lower head. A separate lower yellow is a calling on aspect, indicating that the route is set, meaning all points are locked for that specific movement past the signal, but the line may not be clear of other trains, thus allowing another train to enter the block. Flashing yellow is a shunt ahead aspect, allowing a train to proceed past the signal only as far as necessary for the shunt movement concerned. A solid yellow light mounted to one side of the main heads is a dead end proceed aspect and allows a train to enter a line adjacent to the main line, most commonly a dead end siding. The side that this light is mounted on indicates the side that the siding is on. A much more common extra light is a small green mounted on the lower head itself. Red over red over green in this case is a low speed aspect and allows signalling overlaps to be reduced, increasing capacity. I know earlier I said I wouldn't explain overlaps, but in very simple terms, generally a full block is kept clear behind an occupied block in New South Wales, but these low speed aspects allow trains to slowly enter the buffer block. These signals are almost always accompanied by a train stop, which only lowers, allowing a train to pass, when the train speed has been proved below 25 km per hour, generally by a track mounted DPU. In many cases, further speed triggered train stops are used mid block to ensure trains cannot go fast enough to enter the next block. This is called Moorgate control, named after a tragic accident in London where a train failed to stop at an underground terminus. A much rarer indication is the close up aspect, which is almost identical to the low speed aspect, but without the speed restrictions. 
It is denoted by a separate green light with a board above it, inscribed with the words, close up. When a top yellow is displayed, indicating a diverging route, the lower head can be in either of two states. Double yellow is a medium turnout aspect and indicates that the next signal after the junction will be some form of proceed aspect. Yellow over red is a caution turnout and indicates that the next signal after the junction must be approached as if it was at stop. When a top green is displayed, the lower head can display a variety of different aspects. Double green is a clear aspect and is the least restrictive aspect in this regime. Green over flashing yellow is a preliminary medium, indicating the next signal displays at least a medium aspect. Heavy or fast trains should begin slowing. Green over solid yellow is a medium aspect and indicates the next signal is one of caution, caution turnout, or medium turnout. Green over red is a caution aspect and warns the next signal must be approached as if it was at stop. Double light signals can be arranged in a few ways. In open environments, the heads can either be vertically aligned or slightly off-center, denoting a controlled and automatic signal respectively. In restricted clearance areas, like tunnels, or on signals that can operate as either automatic or controlled, a subsidiary A light is fitted to indicate automatic operation and the heads are vertically aligned. The single light regime is used in areas where the extra capacity and information provided by double light signalling is not necessary. In practice, this is most signalled lines in New South Wales outside of Sydney and Newcastle. This system uses a single head with a lower single red light and broadly follows a standard green-yellow-red progression. When approaching a stop aspect in the single light system, the following aspects will be observed. Green, clear, flashing yellow, medium, yellow, caution, and double red, stop. When approaching a diverging route, a medium aspect will precede either a caution turnout with red over a solid yellow diagonal line, or medium turnout, with red over a flashing yellow diagonal line, where the line points in the direction of the route taken. The same aspects apply when a double red is shown on a single light signal. Falling on, shunt ahead, dead end, low speed, and close up. In some cases, additional warning may be needed on approach to some signals. For example, if terrain limits the sighting distance of a signal. Various types of repeater may be used. LED repeaters display either a vertical or horizontal band indicating the repeated signal is not at stop or at stop respectively. Position light repeaters do the same thing, only using a set of three lights to create the same rough diagonal horizontal arrangement. Sometimes full repeater, distant, or co-acting signals are used. In this case, repeaters and distant signals can be read as a normal signal. If the signal they repeat is at stop, they will display caution, etc. Co-acting signals are placed directly adjacent to the signal they repeat and mimic its indication. Occasionally, co-acting signals display simplified aspects like double red, yellow, and green, and are ground-mounted. Sometimes it is necessary to provide separate ground-mounted shunt signals for shunting applications if there is no suitable signal to affix them to. These are known as subsidiary signals. They display two red lights when at stop and a single yellow when at caution. These signals may also be mounted on running lines between two main signals. When this is the case, they are called intermediate signals and have an additional green aspect to indicate the previous signal's authority extending past the intermediate signal. Mainline indicators advise drivers of the state of level crossings and diverging routes ahead. They provide no information about the occupancy of the line. They are marked with a letter on a white diamond and can display flashing white, meaning a mainline route is set and the level crossing equipment is functional, solid yellow, meaning the same as above, but the next indicator is at stop, solid red, meaning stop, and a solid red over angled white lights, 
meaning a diverging route is set. Points indicators are provided where there would be no other indication of the state of points, like a signal with turnout aspects, mainly unsignaled sidings. When traveling in the trailing direction, where two tracks converge, points indicators display double red when the points are not set for that line, and or a set of catch points, which deliberately derail trains, are open. When the route is set and locked for that line, a white arrow is displayed in the direction of the converge from the reverse route. When approaching in the other direction, or facing, a single red light is displayed if the route is not set and locked, and a white arrow points in the direction of the set diverging route. The final part of colour light signalling are the various types of route indicators. These exist to provide additional information to drivers on the specific route being taken, where many could be described by one single aspect, such as the start of a multi-track line or the approach to a major station. Theatre-style indicators are mounted above signals and display a letter or number corresponding to the line or platform a train is routed to. Eggbox-style indicators are mounted above calling-on or subsidiary signals to provide the same information. Turnout repeaters take the form of a white diagonal line pointing in the direction of a diverging route. When the mainline route is set, the repeater is blank. They are used if additional braking distance should be provided before a turnout signal, due to high line speeds, to allow drivers to query an incorrect route. They can be mounted on the signal preceding the turnout, or the one preceding that, depending on the necessary braking distance. Sometimes, where the speed of a diverging route is almost equal to that of the mainline route, the signal protecting the junction will never display a turnout indication, with one of the preceding signals having a turnout repeater at braking distance to give drivers warning of the upcoming diverge or to query an incorrect route. I've definitely omitted certain parts of New South Wales signalling that I feel are unnecessary to discuss due to their rarity or prerequisite technical knowledge. I encourage anyone watching to read more about signalling and signalling procedures on RailSafe and ARTC's rulebooks, linked below. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them in the comments. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, please consider subscribing or even becoming a channel member. This is a new thing I'm doing to allow a more concrete revenue flow, which will enable me to pursue much more ambitious projects in the coming years, which I have many ideas for, including various videos involving extensive regional travel. I won't be changing my upload schedule or making any other drastic changes to the way the channel is run, but you will receive certain perks if you choose to become a member as a thank you for supporting the channel, including early access to videos. Memberships range from $1.50 to $4 per month. If you're interested, please do take a closer look.